Testing? Oh, it's working. <laughs> um, my name is Niklas Akkeluden. I come from Winter Wireless and probably is a new face to many people here. It's my first mum. I'm a certified trainer and the company's CTO and I manage our ISP and our WISP. Winter Wireless, we're a Nordic distributor of several different brands who we shall not name. Um, and we are many of us is certified trainers within the vendors we, we manage. And in the Northern Stockholm area, we're wireless ISP and internet I or <laughs> normal ISP, just for regular fiber. We're up to 14 employees right now, and uh, we have just started solar panel and battery, battery banks distribution. And we are also starting our annual conference in north of Sweden, <laughs> in the northern parts of Stockholm. And it's open for all players. It's uh, workshops, presentations like this, and uh, exhibitions. And I'm going to keep a more <laughs> low-scale agenda than, uh, than the BGP guys. Uh, we had a very interesting case that I thought that my critique would be excellent for. It's an elderly home where they have these you know, watches for alarms and the heart monitor and everything. So the SLA must be over the top. We can't have any downtime whatsoever, a few seconds of failover. So uh, the products I used is the HAP AC light. This one I have on the table which comes with a comfy USB port on the side. And uh, my LT modem of choice, for this one I actually used the Huawei 3351, but you can check the Wikipedia for supported hardware for your choice. And last but not least, I use the PoE bank, since we can feed the HAP AC light with PoE in for extra redundancy. And we also distribute these and they also come with real power compliance. So a few of the factors that I needed to take in mind here was the dynamic situation. These are going to be placed wherever in Sweden. Uh, so we had SIM cards with dynamic DHCP addressing. We had uh, a city net with dynamic DHCP settings. So to do all this, we had to go through our a few steps. Since you all know, when we get the dynamic DHCP from, uh, from our internet service provider, it comes in as unmanageable in our Mikrotix interface. So by adding a routing filter, we can, for an example, address ping gateway to our uh, dynamic IP or our dynamic route. And we had to set different distances since the LTE interface would be secondary in our priority list and the cable connection would be first. And we have the scheduler that runs on pair with the ping gateway check. And we have my background script. I will talk and show the script. And this is for a dynamic environment. I'll just bring out my Mikrotik. So first off, we have the routing filter. It's pretty basic, but not so, so such a used function. We have the dynamic in chain, which is the dynamic route setting. And for actions, we let it pass through and we set the check pin gateway. Normally, the default routes is not configurable, it's just grayed out. But by adding the, the bridge filter, we can easily enable this. And we have two DHCP clients. We have one for the LTE slot and we have one for Ethernet 1 in my scenario. Uh, 
and the Ethernet one is at a higher root distance than the LTE interface. Unfortunately, the LTE interface is not showing because I don't have anything plugged in. Uh, but just by using distance and pin gateway check, uh, the route routing table will automatically set the active route. And uh, for the ones who are managing this, it's very important that they know that the connection is live and where the connection is coming from. So to check this constantly, we have a script running in the background that asks which route is active and which IP address it has. So it's pretty simple. Mixer 6 scripting isn't my main language, but I managed so far, so I, I'm pretty sure many of you can build this out to a much better script. Uh, but to start with, we have the local lookup where it checks which uh, route is active and on what interface it's active and we add a local variable to that. Uh, after we check which IP address the static root interface has, and we also dig out the host name. And this runs ever so often that you want. I set mine for five seconds, so it runs almost all the time, just to see if, the, if there's been any changes in the addressing. And by default, it will look up, if there's a mismatch between the first lookup and the second lookup, it will say if the IP address has changed or the interface that it's using has changed, we will get an email from whatever your domain is stating that host name has changed uplink and it will say which interface is active and which IP address it's using. And then we set the environment variable last to current IP. So when it runs the next time, it will check up the environment variable once again. And if it's a mismatch, it will execute once more. And using this, I got around 20 seconds for total failover. And it's running still today, so with pretty good results. And this script is, uh, the entire configuration is available in the slide. I won't show the slide, but when you download it later, you will have access to it. And I actually had the time to figure out what, what, what more can I use to this. So I like traveling and I like security. So of course I won't just connect my laptop to any internet or I won't connect it to any LAN socket whatsoever. So the HAP AC light brings out a new perspective to that as well. Uh, since it has dual band, we can connect one of the bands to our hotel and still remain with the failover script since we can bridge the WAN interfaces. For instance, we have a bridge now on top of, of Ethernet 1 very basic, is the, is the van. So if I want to extend my van, so let's use my uh, five gigahertz for uplink, the script will still queue the interfaces and will still work. Oh. <laughs> let's remove it from the LAN. Oh, I think I said it did. And now we can use the uh, 5 gigahertz for uplinking to our hotel Wi-Fi and we can still use the cable if we can connect anything in our hotel. And we can bring our Chromecast or whatever device and just have our own internal net at the hotel and still have full security. And if the hotel for some reason doesn't have uh, Wi-Fi, we can still use our 3G modem to, to connect. And that's basically the, the failover function. Uh, it's uh, brought to us by a customer that, uh, that's uh, into smart home solutions who ordered this and, and still have very good results with it. Um, the next thing I'm going to share with you is uh, one of the most common problems for us, I think, 
is the uh, Dan RJ45 connectors and how to get them perfect. Um, I think every one of us has been trying to get Watchdog to work on a decent level at remote sites and, uh, and power cycling, whatever. Um, with this RJ connector, we get the pairs all up in the way front, so we lose pretty much zero impedance. And uh, the connector we're seeing now is just the basic and default connector. Uh, there is shielded connectors as well. And uh, the crimp tools that we use for this has a blade on them that cuts the extension pairs. And by doing this we get higher reliability and since we've been starting using them we never ever power cycle anything in our net anymore. And to top it off, we even sell them in-house. So you can just contact us for either the crimp tools or the connectors itself. Um, So yeah, that, that's basically what I had to show you today. And uh, if you have any questions regarding the uh, script, you can just ask them right away and I'll try to answer it in the best manner. <laughs>